Good morning. I uh, uh, just wanted to share some thoughts with you. It's uh, Tuesday, September 29th, and a great passage in Acts chapter 13, uh, the church at Antioch. Uh, God was blessing it, and great things were happening, and uh, uh, they had some tremendous men of God and women of God in that church, and and the Lord uh, calls from that church, Paul and Barnabas, he separates them out uh, for the work whereunto I've called them. Just want to read a couple verses, beginning in verse 1. It says, Now there, was, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Menaean, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. From that point forward, you, you find the, the ministry of Paul and Barnabas that is chronicled in that uh, first missionary journey. But it's, it's interesting to me that, uh, that in, this, in, in these few verses that uh, God is looking at a at a at a pool of of individuals that uh, that uh, were candidates uh, for this work that God was calling them unto, and and uh, I, I would just submit that uh, even though Paul and Barnabas were called out of that group and called to the work God had for them, every one of them had a work that God was using them in. They they all were difference makers uh, for the kingdom of God, and. And uh, not all of us uh, will, will be called to, uh, to, to foreign fields, such as Paul and Barnabas, uh, but all of us ought to be concerned about, uh, about making a difference and about doing something for, for the Lord, about accomplishing the work that, uh, that God has called us unto. And so I just want to take a quick look at these, these individuals that uh, that God uh, was was choosing from, that God was calling out from, and and uh, wanted to take a look at these these five candidates, these five individuals. The first is Barnabas, uh, in the list we're given uh, that uh, that begins in verse one. And Barnabas was a a Levite. Uh, he was he was a wealthy Levite. Uh, he sold some property we know later on, and or had sold some property on on Cyprus, and he gave the money to to the apostles to, uh, to further the church. Uh, he, was, he was a good man. He was obviously a compassionate man. Uh, he was noted as an encourager. He was the son of consolation. Uh, he was a spiritual man. It's recorded that Barnabas was, was filled with or full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, he was a, a man with a kind and loving disposition. Uh, he proved that in his dealings with, with Saul, who became uh, the apostle Paul. Barnabas played an integral role in, in, in getting Paul uh, uh, invested and involved with, uh, uh, with the apostles, with the disciples, and, and uh, he was the one who was a risk taker and made himself vulnerable to, to reach out uh, unto Saul, and, and uh, he also uh, proved it with his, with his dealings with John Mark, and I know that was his nephew, but, uh, but the reality is, um, you know, he, he took some risks and invested in him and, and he saw potential in him. And, 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 and the thing you find about, about Barnabas is Barnabas was this tremendous encourager. Uh, he was a man that, uh, uh, that, that uh, fit the bill of Galatians chapter 6. If, if you see a brother overtaken in a brother, if you see a uh, brother overtaken in a fault, you would just spiritual restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. He was a man who, uh, who saw the, the needs and also saw the opportunity and reached out to folks. Uh, you, you also find, secondly, uh, Simeon, who's called Niger. He's given the nickname Niger, which which literally means black, and it would suggest that he was dark complected. He was uh, he was a, a black man, and uh, uh, it's quite possible uh, that uh, very probable that he was he was Simon a Cyrenian from Mark chapter fifteen, the father of Alexander and Rufus, uh, mentioned by Paul in Romans chapter sixteen. Uh, Paul obviously knew the family, uh, probably had lived with them in Antioch. Uh, he refers to, uh, to the mother of Alexander and Rufus as or his mother and mine. And, and so Paul knew this family and, and had spent some time with them. And the one thing that, that this Simon or Simeon was noted for 
was carrying Jesus' cross in, in Mark 15. He, uh, he was the one that was called out of the crowd when Jesus couldn't carry the burden anymore. And uh, he shouldered that load for Jesus. And so, so step for step, he, he plodded together with the Lord through the streets of Jerusalem on the way uh, to Golgotha. He, uh, he, was, uh, uh, he was the one that, uh, that was with him as he, as he made that journey. And, and uh, uh, he saw him beaten. He saw him battered. He, he saw the hateful crowd jeering at Jesus. He saw the mocking and blasphemous soldiers. He, uh, he saw the death of the Son of God. Um, I, I would imagine he would have loved to have turned his eyes away, but he couldn't. He couldn't look away as, as that day unfolded. He, he saw everything that took place, the, uh, the earthquake, the, the rocks that were rent, the darkness that swept uh, over that mountaintop. He heard the cry of the Roman centurion that truly this was the Son of God. And uh, uh, you find that uh, here's a man that uh, that, that had uh, a vision of Calvary stamped on his heart that day, and it was something he never would have gotten beyond. It, it literally transformed his life uh, to see Jesus die that day. And so here's a man with a, with a vision of Calvary. He understood the, uh, the depth of Christ's sufferings and what it, what it accomplished for him, how, how he died in, in, uh, in his place. Jesus died in his place. Then you find Lucius of Cyrene, and, and uh, he was probably a convert of Simeon, uh, both of them being Cyrenians. Uh, no doubt Simeon had, had shared his story everywhere he went, and, and I just believe that uh, Lucius was, was part of that fruit that remains. He was one who, who heard the account, and, and uh, he, he, he believed the account, and he was, he was saved and became a disciple of the Lord, and, and here's one who grew in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and, and uh, ministered together uh, with, uh, with Simeon. And, and so he was a man that had personally experienced the power of the witness of the gospel. And uh, he knew the power of the message, and, and uh, he knew what, what God was able to do. And quite honestly, he is, a, he is a product already of missions, if you will. And, and then fourthly was Menaean. <coughs> Menaean had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, the text tells us uh, in Acts 13, uh, he was the son of Essene. Essene was a man who had gained favor uh, with, uh, with Herod the Great. Uh, he was, uh, his, his son, Menaean, was literally a foster brother, uh, if you will, with, uh, with Herod's son. And, and uh, uh, the boys were the same age. They were, they were treated as royal princes. They were, they were raised up in the royal court. And, and uh, uh, so he was the foster brother, if you will, um, in, in a loose sense, of Herod Antipas. And and uh, uh, Herod Antipas, by the way, was the adulterer. He was the one who stole Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. He, he was the murderer that had John the Baptist put to death. And, and, and so these, these two young men spent a great deal of time together, so much so they were like brothers. And uh, they, they were exposed to a lot of the same things. They were, they were educated together. They played together. They grew up together. And yet, even though they came from the same environment, they ended up so differently. Uh, I, I do know this, the choices we make, they determine everything. Uh, Menaean became a believer. Herod became a deceiver. Uh, Menaean became a minister. Herod became a murderer. And, uh, and so here's this man, uh, Menaean, who, uh, who found uh, liberty and freedom in Christ that he never would have found uh, where, where he was at and, and in the confines he was in. And then the last one is Saul. And uh, Saul really needs no introduction he becomes the Apostle Paul. Uh, he is the persecutor that, that, that ends up being persecuted himself. And uh, he becomes the great church planner, the, the biblical author, the soul winner, uh, and a, an amazing, outstanding individual for the cause of Christ. And you find in this passage that the Holy Spirit separates out uh, Paul and Barnabas uh, under the work that he called them to. Well, well, here's what I know. They had a specific work that God called them to, but every one of us have a work that God calls us to. And just because Saul and Barnabas or Paul and Barnabas were separated out, it, it, it doesn't mean that, that these other individuals did nothing. It, it, it doesn't mean that, that, that Simeon and Lucius and Menaean, that, that they just kind of sat on their laurels and didn't do a thing. They, they kept serving, they kept working, they kept making a difference, and they made a difference in Antioch where God had planted them while Paul and Barnabas went around and made a difference 
in the places God led them to and directed them to. And so every one of us are called to be different makers, different difference makers. And, and we, we do that as we yield ourselves unto God. Doesn't matter what our background is. Doesn't, doesn't matter uh, what, our, what our strengths or what our weaknesses are. It, it doesn't matter where God plants us or where God directs us. Uh, every one of us, we have a place of service, and we need to find that, and we need to do that. And, and boy, it's so refreshing to see the church at Antioch and, and, and what God did through the leadership, but also uh, what he did through the layman of that church and how, how God just used them in a remarkable way. And I would just encourage us to be difference makers. Uh, whether God leaves you where he's planted you already or whether God, God directs you and calls you out, separates you out into, into some other place, just follow God's plan for your life and let God use you. And, uh, and God will use you to make a difference for him in this world. And I hope we'll, we'll take advantage of those opportunities. Father, thank you for the day. Uh, Lord, help us today to be cognizant that uh, you've called us to be difference makers. And, and Lord, we're going to run across folks in our, in our life daily that, uh, that we have an opportunity to impact and influence for you. Uh, Lord, just help us to be faithful unto you, uh, Lord, that we can be fruitful for you. And uh, Father, I pray that you take our lives, may they be surrendered and yielded unto you. Doesn't matter what our background is, doesn't matter where we came from. Uh, Lord, just help us to realize that, Lord, when we're surrendered unto you and we rest in your hands, you are able to use us for your glory and for your honor. And so, Lord, today I pray you do that in each and every one of our lives. Help us to be faithful to you and be used by you uh, that we might exalt you and point others unto you. Now, Lord, thank you for the day. We just give you praise in it, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you. I hope you have a great day and look forward to seeing you tomorrow night in church. Uh, I hope you'll take advantage of, of uh, the opportunities God gives us daily, uh, but also those special opportunities that God gives us uh, to gather together as well. We need that time of refreshment. Uh, we need that time of accountability. Uh, we need that time of fellowship with one another. And, uh, and I, I think folks are seeing the value of that that, uh, that has been uh, maybe stripped away in these days that we've lived in. And, and I'm grateful that, uh, uh, that we're able to get back to a lot of that. God bless you. Hope to see you soon.